that you can't hold your peace and you have to throw it out there. Once you get sin, you can't unring the bell. And if it's anything short of the God that I serve and the faith that I practice does not allow me to accept that. Anything you say around that could lead you into some hot water in this society, right. so to speak. But if you say that from that perspective, you are totally protected by the God you serve and the faith that you practice. They can't come against that. But that don't mean you can say that y'all better not put this bathroom up in there. That just makes you check yourself because that's all you should be speaking anyway. Right, right. So, so that's what we're saying. So we're just saying taking away the law, they have not done that for the faith we practice yet. They just allowing everybody. All they do is prep everybody for the new good law. Get a pot for the that's pot, pot, pot boiling over. Right. That's all it is, man. I mean, they you want to deal with a lot of this vexed inside of the of Of course, it's going to cut your spirit, burn you up when you see yes, Leroy switching down the street. I mean, you ain't never going to like that. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, you can't walk across the wrong brother and we out there reading scriptures. We not about to not read. A scripture just because you a sodomite. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like your feelings gonna be hurt. It's just what it is, but again, you're still protected by the law. But the Bible don't call them facts. Right. They're sodomites. Absolutely. You feel me? So it's certain things that the way we can say it and still be straight in our employment and all that. Indeed. Why is that a certain Yeah, but uh never but but never go quiet on no man. That's right. Yeah. You feel me? You ain't you ain't gotta go quiet. Long as there's freedom of religion, that I mean, that's according to them. Hey, it depends on what brother you cap off the cross. You feel me? Some brother may just pull you aside and let you know, like, look, man, you need to stop that. Right. You feel me? Because you won't be able to you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God. You won't be able to see God like that. That's right. You feel me? That right there will put a certain spirit of fear on you. Oh, hold on. Let me see what's going on. But sometimes that be for us too, that we be lusting to cuss our own sex. Yeah, we do. <laughs> you better not switch over here. Right. <laughs> the devil wants you to do that. You yeah. don't yeah. yeah. think that way. Yeah. Yeah. Find no intentions of your heart. Right. So if it's not an edification, you should set your mouth on it anyway. Right. Basically. All right, let's, let's get any, any questions though. Anybody got questions? Uh, I just noticed uh, in having conversations with people that are supposed to be like that that's supposed to be walking out. Once you have conversations with them and, and, you're, and you give a thanks to the most high for the son, then I have realized that everybody's not on the same. I know that they're not a, you have a good conversation, but then when you give thanks to the most high for the son, they mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? You know, and then I realized all that time I've been talking to somebody that's going to be quiet. So it's like, it's like really overwhelming. It's a lot of issues that I'm talking to. And, Thinking they're on the right track, you know, a life and a with them, and then realize that they weigh off. Yeah, that's where that's, that's where the bus stops at. You feel right. me? You're running a lot of that. You're running the brothers, understand? We the Hebrews, we the Israelites. Uh, you run 28 commandments of God. You know, spirit. That's right. Well, the spirit, right. Try the spirit. But when the but when the uh but when the Messiah is on the line. It's, right. And that's a major topic right there. That's mm -hmm. nothing that you uh like you kind of just overlook. Some people put it out there like you can overlook that, right? But you cannot overlook that because it has to do with life and death. The role of Messiah play was set up by his father. Alright, we gotta I'm gonna uh, matter of fact just get on there real quick. One of the brothers right John chapter 8 for Go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's the same exact vibration because you got this it, group of Hebrews trying to go to the United Nations and he recognizes the state, Israel or whatever, right? Uh, how is a nation or whatnot? The nations consist of one, the king, and then the subordinates under the king. Feel me? Like all these people within his cabinet and all that. My, so my first question was who the king, how he anoint the king, and then. He got to do all the choosing, meaning he may be a minister of information, he may be a minister of defense, he may be sergeant in arms. Like, the ranks and positions in the government body of the king got to be set up as well. Who doing the picking? 
Uh. You feel what I'm saying? So now you got brothers that believe in the Messiah, brothers don't believe, trying to come together. Guess what? That kingdom gonna fall too. That's right. It's gonna fall. You can't let a whole bunch of uh, quote unquote black folk loose on a plot of land and just say, hey, do whatever you wanna do. No. no. That kingdom gonna fall. Two can't walk together unless they agree. Yeah. Right. So conversation was good all the way up to this point, but when we get to talk about the Messiah, and remember this, we ain't talking about who better, the Miami Heat or the Pacers. We talking about the Messiah. Right, right. You people say, oh man, you check him at the door like a coach here. Mm. Oh man, we get this. That's a petty difference. Right. Is it? What they say. Well, let's read about, about this petty difference they talk about first. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Start at verse 20, bro. 20 through 24. Verse 20. Everybody there? Hold on. Let everybody get there. Show y'all what we're talking about real quick. And then we get to our topic here. Hey, just because somebody know they Israel, even Paul said all oh, Israel is not Israel. That's right. I believe that. So, you know, a lot of us, especially like when some of us first found out, every time you heard somebody say Shalom, you were smiling, on fire. Yeah, that's right, bro. It's good. But then when you sit down with people and get to, you know, because iron sharp and iron. That's right. right. And then you get to sharp and spoil and you're like, hold on, bro. Like, that's something else. I ain't never even heard of that. What are you talking about? And you see it's something totally different. Israel has to accept Christ as they say it. And we are not talking about the image you've been shown your whole life. We're talking about Jesus of Nazareth that the Bible speak of. That's right. Who was a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. I don't know whatever Jesus was. He is an Israelite. <laughs> from right. the tribe of Judah. Hebrews 7 and 14. That's what he was. His walk, he kept the commandments of his father. That's what it is. That's right. You look at all he was from the tribe of Shabazz. Uh, he was from this. Uh, no, no. He was the record says he was from the tribe of Judah, born in Bethlehem. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what he is, was, and will be. And he's the king of Israel, not only Israel, the entire world. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's read about the consequence of not accepting him. Whether you be Israelite or not. <coughs> John chapter 8, verse 20. These words spake Jesus in the treasure as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, uh, for his hour was not yet come. Now, if he's speaking uh, very soft and, uh, you know, no threat, men wouldn't have been looking to lay hands on him. Let you know how he was speaking. It cut men to the, to the core of the way they wanted to lay hands on this man. But they couldn't because it wasn't his hour yet. All right, come on, brother. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sin. Whither I go, ye cannot come. He's talking to his people. You're going to die in your sin. How you tell somebody that without them being offended? Because okay. the day you say, okay, you read the Bible, well, it shouldn't come off offensive, brother. <laughs> you <What>? sure? <laughs> Like, nah, I ain't ain't to stumble you up or whatever, but if we read these scriptures and then you get, uh, you have a hard problem sleeping at night, who problems that? Mm -hmm. That's something you need to check within yourself. Because the Lord straight told the, the, his own people, you dead in your sins. Unless you believe I need you done. All right, come on, brother. Then said the Jew, will he kill himself? <laughs> because he said, will I go, he cannot go. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. So Christ said, I'm from above. You can get this Joseph vibration out your mind. Because he's talking to men that were born to a father and mother and told all them y'all from beneath. I'm from above. All right, come on, bro. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sin. For if ye believe not, that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. See, so how do we, even though the brothers know that he rules, how do we unite and y'all don't believe in the Messiah? Right. You think you can accept him on his way back? Okay, I get down now. It don't work like that. You need to be practicing to enter the kingdom now. That's what it is. He ain't come take that beating and shed that blood for you to look at it as if I'm not going to need that. Right. It's not an easy work. You sure? You sure about that? You get mad, you get a paper, a splinter. <laughs> Ain't even drop no blood for the kingdom of heaven, but swear you can do what the Lord did. Read out 26. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? 
And Jesus said unto them, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. Well, I, I've been speaking since Genesis. Beginning or the head is Genesis. See, that's the mystery of the scriptures. You can find Christ back in the Old Testament. That's right. Before he ever came in the flesh. See that? So that's how we know the men that don't believe in him ain't spiritual at all. They about deep as a water slope. Mm -hmm. But you got to go back to Genesis 1 and explain, who was this with God in the beginning that said, let us make man in our image? Oh. Scripturally shows. I mean, you can say that was my granddaddy or something. <laughs> who was it? Scriptorial. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> all right, come on, brother. I have many things to say and to judge of you. And to what? Judge of you. Wow, come on. But he that sent me is true. So he keeps talking about his father. Christ never trumped his father. He said, look, my father sent me. He that sent me is true. Come on, brother. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. He didn't speak religion. He spoke what the father told him to speak. Which is what? Commandments, laws, statutes, and judgments. That's what he taught. Broke the scriptures down. Told him, you been reading about Moses? Moses wrote me. Who do you think Moses was talking about? Who do you think David was talking about? See, so the brothers that believe that Israel is coming to them, step number one, you first must accept Christ mm. as the king of Israel. Then you get to your, your culture and your nationality and all that. That's what, that, that, that's what that's all about. You can learn culture and all that, but your whole spirit will be jacked up if you ain't got your spirit right first. Zeal without knowledge. Yeah, you get that right through Christ. You got a question? A statement, actually. Because God basically says it straight out. If you, if, even if you are of Israel, it don't mean nothing if you're not keeping his commandments, if you're not accepting his son. It, it's, it's, worse off, it's worse off for you than it is for the Gentiles. That's right. So all Israel, not Israel, right? right. All Israel is hey, what is Hey, what is that description? Wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> what is that description? He probably deserves it. I can't remember that one. Okay, when we find it, shout it out to the class, the DJ. All right, we're going to Deuteronomy 18 next. Deuteronomy 18, start at verse 15. Old Testament prophecy about the Messiah. Those that don't accept him are done deal. Deuteronomy 18. And we, we do that, y'all, to make sure everybody in class paying attention on point to make quiz in class. Randomly ask somebody a question to make sure you listen. Mm -hmm. Now we're down for it. Now we're eating. Right. We're still silent today. We need some juice. Right. 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 No? We're down here to get some understanding. Because the end of the days is close. We heard. Mm -hmm. A lot of things going on unless you're paying attention. Right? We just slip right over you. And then, guess what? That whole thief of the night is what it is. Mm. He probably was a thief of the night for those that ain't looking. Oh, bro. All right, let's get it. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. Yes, sir. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren. Of thy brethren. Now, this, the, the, the Muslims are saying this is talking about Muhammad. But the key word here is of your brethren. Your brethren, Moses was talking to, this is after the Exodus, he was talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, from the midst of you, of your brethren. So this prophet Moses is talking about would not be Muhammad. He didn't matter. He wasn't at the mountain. Nor were the Arabs at the mountain. Mm. If the children of Israel were at the mountain. Tell them what mountain was. Tell them what mountain was. He was at Mount Sinai. Receiving the laws, commandments, and statutes of the Lord. So he was telling Israel this at the mountain while he was getting the legislation <coughs> for the king or for the government that's going to be set up. Look, the prophet you're supposed to listen to going to be coming right out of this of the 12 tribe. Right, so get my, Muhammad got to get about her because he's not out the midst of Israel. Muhammad was an Arab. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not like that. Hold on. Muhammad was a man of the Lord too. Really? No. Mm -hmm. Muhammad was a prophet. Really? He got prophecies that came to pass. Mm -hmm. That was written down that came to pass. Mm -hmm. You may have been past a false prophet. I right know where he at. Right, it should be in a book. It should be found. It ain't here. All right, come on, bro. Let's get it. Like unto me, mm. unto him ye shall walk. Right, so when he said he's going to be like unto Moses, meaning a lawgiver, mediator, and a deliverer. Whoever this is, got to play those roles right there. You got to be a lawgiver, a mediator between Israel and the Most High, mm. 
and they deliver. Mm -hmm. Got to deliver. All right, come on, brother. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Oren, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore, that I die not. That I what? Die not. The presence of the Lord shook our people to the core. It wasn't like flutes was playing, trumpets was blowing. The whole mountain was on fire. Earth was shaking. That was going on when Israel met the Most High. Right? They were so shook, they were scared. They told Moses, hold on, now we good. You go holler at him. It still burns to this day. Yeah, mm -hmm. top's up. Top it still burns to this day. Come on, brother. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. They speak well. Why? Because you're supposed to have a level of fear when you're dealing with the God of the Bible. Fear is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. She that you're supposed to be like, you know what? Don't look at him as some fly by night God or a tooth fairy. Look at him like, you know what? He actually has uh, destroyed the whole earth before and spared eight people. How about let me conduct my affairs so I can be in good graces with him? Right. Right. Don't, don't, don't have in your mind other words like, oh, he'll forgive me for that. How you know that? He will be sincere, but that ain't no sincere arms. God forgive me. Uh, I just killed the whole West Side, but <laughs> God forgive me. <laughs> What's that among seven billion people? Right. <laughs> That's the wrong vibration to be in. Yes, if you violate the Lord, you ought to be scared. You're supposed to be constantly petitioning him to forgive you. Admit you was wrong. First, that's the first step to uh, getting back to the Lord. You gotta admit I went off. That's right. Lord, I, I killed the whole West Side. I killed him. Didn't think nothing about him. Why you kill him? I had a dream about him. Hmm? Then you gotta go into repentance. Paul was a murderer. That's right. Right, but he had to repent of that. I'm just actually killing people that's been following the Lord. I'm tripping. So the Lord can forgive you, but your repentance got to be sincere. Can't be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll pray about that tomorrow. You sure? Wow. Mm -hmm. You sure? How many people on the average, I'm just going to quiz somebody else, how many people on the average you think die every 24 hours? Mm -hmm. Go. Mm -hmm. Let's throw a number out there. What you think? Hey, what you think? Uh, that's a good number. Lazarus, what you think, bro? About 255. Ooh, that's a big number. That's amazing. <laughs> 150,000 people die every 24 hours. Oh, wow. Your number coming up somewhere. Ooh, Ooh. You're going to be one in 150 one of these days. Right? So knowing that, in other words, we ought to be conducting ourselves knowing that look, life is short, life is a vapor. You know what I'm saying? Let me try my best to get down the road. Right? Even, even if, you know, we all make mistakes or whatever, but you at least owe the Lord to try. That's right. I'm not even going to try no more. I'm just, no, I, I'm going to mess up anyway. I'm just going to, whatever. You can't be like that. At least try. All right, come on, brother. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brothers, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Mm. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. See? He said it's going to be your death. You don't listen to this one that the Lord said he was sending, that Moses he was speaking about, you're going to be destroyed. That's why that, that's made. Sister was talking about, you know, hooking up with Hebrews, but some of them don't believe in the Messiah. Even in the Old Testament, they say, whoever this is right here, so we about to go identify who this is. We ain't going to leave you out there. Man, that could have been Elijah. That could have been Louis Farrakhan. He, he's in town tomorrow speaking. <laughs> Let me get on down there. Because I mean, if I don't listen to him, the Lord say, I'm done. I'm going to be destroyed. So let me get on down to Muhammad's mosque on West Floors, number 28. No. <laughs> I mean, because if, if Farrakhan is the one Moses is speaking about, we need to be getting down there. That's right. So what we need to do is identify who Moses is talking about right here. So you can understand. Finish it off. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods. Who? Of other gods. Other gods. Tip off. Come on. Even that prophet shall die. Lord said you're done. Whoa. See, there's a judgment for false prophets. <coughs> a 
That's a judgment for those who try to turn you away from the true and living God. Mm -hmm. It's a judgment for you too if you take heed. So what's being taught does matter. You can't be like, oh, whatever. It don't matter. No, it do matter because you can you can be indoctrinated under that and then you pass it to your children. And they grow worse than you. So it does matter. All right, so we need to identify who this is talking about. Who's talking about. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? Good question, right? I mean, he does have on $300 slick bottles. <laughs> I mean, he does, he do got that $1,000 three-piece suit. I mean, hey, he made me, brother. You're the way he talking. So the question is, well, how do we know? Good question. You should want to know that. Well, how do we know if what he's saying is true or not? Next verse, brother. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. Right, that's true. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. You should not be afraid of him. All right, now let's jump over to Acts 3 and identify who this prophet is that Moses was talking about. Let's go on over to Acts 3. Uh, we can start around 19 and we can go back up a little bit if y'all want to. But let's go ahead and identify who this is right here that Moses was talking about. And for y'all don't know, first time is a false prophet anyway. Anyway. Stop. If y'all don't know that by now, y'all don't know about Calypto Luke? That was, his, that was his street name in Boston, in Bean Town. Y'all don't know about old Calypto Louie, huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? That was a, what, a clarinet player? Yeah, clarinet player. Yeah, clarinet player. But he's a false prophet, man. Uh, if y'all don't know, he called me. He actually called Barack Obama the Messiah when he first got elected. Mm. And I was like, and when the Messiah speaks, you better listen. Now hold on, who the Messiah? Because on the back of your final call newspaper, you say Elijah Muhammad the Messiah, mm. right? But then when Obama started endorsing all the sodomites, now you want to talk bad against him. I thought he was the Messiah. Double he's double-minded, like my brother saying up here. That man is not no man of God. And depending on uh, what you look up, he was in on killing Malcolm. Yeah. Depending on the research you look up, some say the FBI did it, but Ferg cut off his own lips was like Malcolm was dealt with like a traitor. And if he was dealt with like a traitor, what business is it of yours? And everybody's saying, I'm clapping. Ah. Huh? You can't be like that, man. Stop giving all these men that much credit. If he was if he was really a threat, they'd have been got rid of him. Then yeah, he's too he's too influential. They'd have been got rid of him if he, if he was that much of a threat. Come on, man. Acts chapter three, start around uh, verse eighteen. Acts chapter three, verse eighteen. Who was this prophet Moses was talking about? Remember, he would be out in the midst of Israel, like into Moses, <coughs> taken from the midst of the breast. And if right. you don't listen to whoever this is, you're gonna be destroyed. Right. right. So if it, if that is Lewis for her kind, we need to be down there. Down there. But if it ain't, he's a false prophet in his breast thing. Mm -hmm. He gonna be called it. All right, let's get it, brother. Acts chapter three. Acts chapter three, verse eighteen. But those things which God before had shown by the mouth of all His prophets mm -hmm. that Christ should suffer, He has so fulfilled. So that's the thing with the Lord. The Lord got promised because <coughs> the Lord is all knowing. Right, so if you're trying to say Muhammad the prophet or, or the Buddhist prophets or the Egyptian prophets, that means they have prophecies written down. Inspired by their gods, they either come to pass or don't come to pass. You see that? So in order for you to be a prophet, step one, you gotta have prophecies. Right, what prophecies do Muhammad have? None. Come on, brother. Verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out mm. when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ. No, Muhammad. Jesus Christ. Louis Farrakhan. Jesus Christ. All right, come on. <laughs> which before was preached unto you. Who before was preached unto you. So before he even came in the flesh, his testimony was already died. That's right. It was written from Genesis all the way up to Mount Kai and even the Apocrypha. Hey. The Son of God is coming. He on his way. This is how he's going to be born. This is where he's going to be born. This is how he's going to die. This is how long he's going to be dead. Uh, he's going to be resurrected. All this in the Old Testament. How he gambled over his garments. 
how they gave him gall and vinegar, how they pierced his hands and his feet through, how he sits on the right hand of the Father. You think David talking about himself? Nah. <laughs> All right, come on. Bro. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of the resurrection. No. Uh -uh. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The times of restitution. restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets right. since the world began. Right. Well, God is